Welcome to the online campus of the Monticello United Methodist Church. We're so thankful that you've decided to join us and, and we want to be your church. And we pray that God would speak into your life today. The best way for you to be a part of our community is to engage in the chat. Post your prayer concerns, where you see God moving, and introduce yourself. We would also ask that you share the stream so that others can hear the good news of Christ as well. Today we're continuing our series entitled, A Jesus-Shaped Life, and we'll be discussing how our lives are shaped by the transformation of our thinking. Is there a way you view life differently than the world around you? Please make a comment about that question in the chat. We also have a connection card if you want to learn more about our church and, and how you can be involved. The link will be in the chat. Once again, thank you for being here and know that Jesus loves you. Thing inside us we cannot contain. Your love will surely come find us, like blazing wildfire, singing your name.
love will surely come find us like blazing wildfire singing your name you can have a seat I'm Susan, and we're so glad you joined us to worship this morning in person and online, and whether you're joining us live or worshiping with us later. Today, we are going to continue the sermon series, A Jesus-Shaped Life, exploring the courage of Jesus. If you are with us in person today, be sure to greet those around you. Then, take a moment to invite someone to join us by sharing our Facebook feed in a personal message or on your social media. And please fill out a digital connection card by using the QR code on the wall or on the back of your bulletin. If you're joining us online, please connect with us in the chat and share thoughts or highlights that got impressed on your heart today. We want to stay connected with you. And please fill out your connection card by clicking on the link in the chat or in the description and let us know that you are watching with us today. Also, there are many ways for you to support the ministry of our church through tithes and offerings. Here in the building, you can scan the QR code on the back of your bulletin or place your offering in the offering box. Online, you can give on the website or in the, through the link in the chat. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the offering, but before I do that, I want to invite Steve McKinley to, to come up. Um, and he's got a quick announcement. Steve is the chairperson of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. And um, so he has some information to share this morning. It's now on. <laughs> I knew that. Good morning. It is my pleasure this morning to uh, let you know that Linda Rumler, our administrative assistant uh, for the church, has announced her retirement, and we're excited for her with that. Uh, sad to see her go, but we're very excited for her next chapter, and she'll be with us through the first part of April, but we'll then be going into retirement with so that she and her husband can spend some more time together. We're certainly appreciative of all that Linda has done for us over the last eight or so years as she's been with us in that role. And again, we wish her the best. So if you have a chance to see her in the next week or so, please thank her for all that she's done for us and wish her well. That would be great. We are going to fill that position. So that's the next opportunity for us. We do have a job description that's been updated. It is available in the office. You can contact Pastor Brian or check with the office. If you or someone you know is interested in that position, we would encourage you to, uh, to, take, to take a look at that because we do need an administrative assistant. So uh, let us know how we can, can help with that. We want to fill that as, as soon as we can. So again, thanks to Linda and look forward to seeing who might be the next person in that role. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. As we come to our time of offering this morning, I want to uh, just remind you that during this season of Lent, we normally do a special offering that we call our Lenten offering that uh, goes to help support camp. And um, you know, tonight's actually going to be the camp sign up. To, you know, the youth for senior high and middle school will have an opportunity to begin signing up for camp. You know, I'm expecting to have a, a large number of, of kids go to camp this summer. We've um, has kind of been disrupted the, the last couple years, and so hopefully we can get back on schedule with that. Expecting over 60 kids to to go to camp from our church this year. But what that also means is that the, the financial commitment on the part of the church, you know, we, we need to raise about um, six to $7,000 for camp scholarships through the, through the congregation. So um, if you give to the Lenten offering, that's going to go to, to support camp scholarships. And uh, thank you for your consideration to, uh, to that great ministry. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Lord, as we come to you in, in this day, we, um, we offer ourselves as your servants. We, we offer our, our resources to be used to, to make a, a difference in your kingdom here on earth. Lord, as we come in, into this place to, to worship today, there are those that just need a, to experience a, a fresh touch of, of your grace. Lord, their hearts are, are heavy. They're carrying a... a a heavy burden, and, and they just 
need to, to know of, of your presence. May, may a wave of, of your grace sweep over them, bringing re refreshment and, and renewal. Circumstances may not change on the, the outside, but, but on the inside, just give them an aware of your presence and, and that you are walking with them, that you will never leave them nor, nor forsake them. Lord, for those who are facing difficult and challenging decisions in, in the days ahead, we pray that you would give them wisdom. Lord, for those who are feeling anxious and, and uncertain about what the days are, ahead are going to hold, we pray that you would give them your, your peace. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for world leaders and just pray that you would give them wisdom and, and knowing the, the right decisions to make in, in the face of adversity, in, in the face of challenges, in the face of evil. Lord, I pray that you would give them courage and, and strength and, and wisdom to, to do the right thing. Lord, we pray that, that the war in Ukraine would, would cease, that the fighting would, would stop, that the, the bombing would, would stop. Lord, for those that are seeking refuge, those who are seeking to find a, a safe place to stay, we, we pray that they might gain safe passage, that there might be uh, those relief workers that, that would be there to, uh, to help them and, and to provide for, for their needs and in the midst of their suffering. Lord, we offer ourselves. May you use us to make a, a difference in ways around the world, but also, Lord, may you use us to make a difference in our own community for your kingdom and for your glory. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Would you stand and join us singing again?
2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be told as I expect to be toward some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. The word of God for the people of God. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Jesus in name above Oh 
and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone gathered here this morning to worship your name. And we recognize that the atmosphere is changing in this room because you are here with us this morning, filling our hearts, opening our eyes, Lord. We pray that you open up our eyes to the sermon that we're to hear today. Heavenly name we pray, amen. Well, several years ago, I, um, I took a youth group on a high adventure canoe trip. I had great plans of, of what was going to happen. We were going to, to take this 20 mile uh, canoe trip down, down the river. It was near uh, Brookville in, in southern Indiana. And uh, after we did the, the 20 mile trip on the river, we were going to set up camp. We were going to, to, to cook our evening meal over a campfire. We were going to, uh, to sit around the campfire that night and, and have deep conversations about life and, and faith. And, and we were going to sleep in tents. And then we were going to, to get up the, the next morning and, and have breakfast cooked over the, the campfire. And then we were going to, uh, to have worship together. And then we were going to head back to, to our homes. So it was a great weekend. You know, I, I couldn't wait. I, I was so excited. Well, one of the things that I learned on, on that trip, first of all, is that all middle schoolers think that they are experts at canoeing when they're on the shore. Then you get in the, the, the water, it, it becomes something different. And, and I was... Um, I was paired up with, with Andrew. We were, we were sharing a boat. Andrew was an eighth grader, and, and I gave him a choice of whether he wanted to be in the front or the back of the canoe, and he wanted in the back because he wanted to steer. And, um, and also, I think he didn't want to paddle as much, too. But, um, but anyway, he, he was in the back of the canoe, and, and we weren't on the water long before I had to start learning how to guide the canoe from the front of the canoe, because we were going zigzag back and forth, and we were, were coming up on, on sandbars on, on the banks and, and stopping. And so I had to learn to, to steer from the front in order to, to keep us going down the river. Well, it was a beautiful day. You know, we were, we were having a great time. You know, the, the river was such that there were lots of calm areas that, that still had a flow to it that, that even if you didn't paddle, it was moving you down the, the water. Also, there were a few rapids, nothing that was too dangerous like a whitewater rafting, but, but it made for a, a little more excitement. And now we were about halfway into to the trip, um, about 10 miles down the river. And at that point, we saw our first challenge ahead of us. There were rapids that were, were in front of us, and a tree had fallen. And so we had to make sure that we maneuvered around the tree. We needed to, to veer to the left, not to, not to the right, because if we went to the right, it was going to take us right under the tree. 
me, and, and I don't know that any of us could, uh, could keep our views upright if, if we went to the right. So we gathered our views together, we talked about a strategy, we talked about how we needed to go to the left and not just follow the flow of the river to, to the right, and everyone was in, in agreement, and, and so we, we proceed. We, we go single one at a time. We thought we were leaving enough room between the, the canoes, but what happened was when we got into the rapids, you know, the flow of the river began to speed us up. So the first canoe went and they maneuvered just fine around to the left. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. The, the second canoe did exactly what they were supposed to do. They maneuvered to, to the left. And then the third canoe, they get there and they kind of panic. And they just decide to go with the flow of the river. Well, they didn't go left, but they went right. And it took them directly into the tree. And they tried to, to duck and go under the tree. And as they ducked one way and then the other, they tipped over the canoe. And they all ended up in the, in the river. Well, the fourth boat, or the fourth canoe, you know, as they saw what had happened to the group in front of them, they panic. And what do they do? They follow the flow of the river. And they go right as well. And now we have two canoes full of of youth that are, are now in the water. And then it was me and Andrew. Well, I had become pretty proficient in navigating from the front uh, in the still waters, but I didn't do so well in the rapids. And so what we did is we followed the other two canoes and we too ended up in the, in, in the water. Now, no, no one was heard. It, it added to, to our adventure, but, but everything got dumped out of the, the canoes, and we learned the hard way that you can't just go with the flow. You know, the same is true in our spiritual lives. We can't just go with the flow and cultivate a Jesus-shaped life. Living for Jesus requires intentional navigation. Living for Jesus requires intentional navigation. Well, let me finish my story about the canoe trip very quickly. Um, we, we did 20 miles on the river. We got to, to the end of our journey and we were exhausted. No one wanted to set up camp. No one wanted to cook dinner over a campfire. No one wanted to have uh, deep conversations about faith and life around the campfire. The weather forecast was calling for thunderstorms that night. And so we just decided to pack up and we went back to, to town and we stayed in the, the front room of, of one of the parishioners in, in our sleeping bags that, that night. Well, it wasn't exactly what I had planned, but that's what happened. So as we continue our series this week entitled A Jesus-Shaped Life, it's important for us to re remember that living for Jesus requires intentional navigation. Living for Jesus requires intentional investment in seeking to, to have a, a Jesus-shaped life. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Apostle Paul wrote, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation means becoming more like Jesus. When we renew our minds, when we renew the, the way we think, it helps us to to be shaped into how it is that God wants us to live. When I was in seminary, my, my last three semesters, I lived in a house with seven other guys. And uh, as we moved into the house, we, you know, it was unfurnished, so we had to, to bring things with us to, uh, to, to fill the house. And, and, and Michael had gone to a, a yard sale or a garage sale and found an old Hoosier cabinet that was pretty beat up and had been painted several times. He gave $10 for it, and it didn't look like it was worth much more than that. But he brought it home, and he decided to, to restore it. He took all the, the old paint off and took it down to, to the wood. He sanded it, and then he refinished it. And when he was done, what he had was a, a beautiful piece of furniture that looked almost brand new. You know, he had restored it. He had renewed it. And in that restoration, it, it, um, it brought transformation. 
you know, a Jesus-shaped life requires that our minds be be renewed, that that our minds be be restored and and helping us to, to think as Jesus wants to think, wants us to think, and as our thinking, as our thought processes are are transformed, then it spills over into into our actions. When we developed thought habits that that are are not from God, those bad thought habits can become strongholds in our life. They they can be obstacles that keep us from being and living as God wants us to live. In our scripture this morning, Paul begins acknowledging that when he's away from from them, when he's away from the, the Corinthian church, when he's away from other churches, he writes some letters in which he's very bold, you know, he's very confrontive and, and tell them, you know, this is how you need to live. This is what you need to do. But, but he says, when I come to you, uh, he said, I'm, I'm more timid. Basically, Paul's saying, I, I don't like the, the confrontation. I don't want to be in your face. So he said, I'm writing this to you, hopefully, so that, that you will change the way that you live so that I don't have to confront you when, when I come. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, with verse 3, it, it says, For though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. As followers of Jesus, we live differently than the world around us. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We, we have a, a power in the Holy Spirit, a, a divine power that helps us to break down those, those strongholds, that helps us to, to break down that, that wrong thinking in order that we might think and act as Jesus would want us to live and act. You know, one type of stronghold in in our life are are lies. Our lies that that Satan plants in in our lives. A stronghold is any mindset, value, teaching, or philosophy that opposes the truth of God. That's okay. Nope. Okay, we're, we're back. Or maybe not, so. So, Spiritual strongholds are lies that we believe that keep us from being who God wants us to be. So, you know, what are, are some of those spiritual strongholds? What are, what are some of those, those lies? Uh, there may be some who you believe that God doesn't love you as much as he loves others. You may believe that, that you're not important to God, but, but the Bible tells us that, that God loved the, the world so much that he sent his only begotten son, not for someone else, but for you, that you might not perish and, and have everlasting life. You're important to God. You, you matter to God. Uh, another lie that, that um, we sometimes you know, embrace that uh, that that if I do what God wants me to do, then I'm going to be miserable. If I say yes to, to God, my life's going to be ruined and, and it's going to be miserable. But, but that is not true. That, that's a lie. Actually, when we embrace what God wants us to do, do in life, there is nothing more fulfilling. There's, there's not, nothing greater that we could embrace in life than to do what, what God wants us to do. There may be someone listening this morning that, that um, you're not sure whether God hears your prayers. It seems that you pray and, and it's just kind of hitting a, hitting a ceiling and, and going nowhere. But let me assure you, God hears your prayers. God, God is concerned about those things that weigh on, on your heart. And God will answer your prayers in his way and in his timing. But that may not be exactly as you want them answered, nor may not happen in the time you want. Sometimes a stronghold of, of lies that we hold on to in our lives are, are lives that, lies that we tell ourselves, lies that, that we're not willing to, to let go of our, ourselves, like, I can never forgive myself, or I, I will never amount to anything, I'll never be good enough, or if something bad's going to happen, well, it's just... 
it's always going to, to happen to, to me. Behind every sin in life, there's a lie. And so what we need to do is to, to renew our thinking, transform our thinking. And as our, our thinking is transformed more into to the ways of Jesus, that then helps to shape how we live, how we, how we act. You know, in the Gospel of John, Jesus declares himself to be the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus also said, that uh, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So when we know God's truth in our life, that truth will, will actually bring us freedom, not bondage. To be mentally and, and, and spiritually healthy, to, to be mentally and, and spiritually free, we need to demolish strongholds. We need to demolish the strongholds of, of, of lies in our life and, and to, to exchange it for God's truth. In verse 5 of, of this morning's scripture reading, it says, We demolish our arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We're to make our thoughts obedient to Christ. And as we think godly thoughts as we think Christ-like thoughts that influences the way we act. You know, it's not like an, an undisciplined dog that uh, needs to go to obedience school and, and won't listen to his owner and, and is, um, is, is bouncing off the, the walls and, and running wild. It, it's not an issue of, of seeing something shiny that, that uh, draws your attention away and, and, and you lo lose focus. But we need to, to make our thoughts captive to Christ. And then to obey what he tells us to do. You know, I want to invite the, the band to, to come forward to, to lead us in another song. And, and as they do, I, I want you to, to reflect on, on this question. Are there strongholds in your life? Are, are there lies in your life that, um, that are causing you to have a, a pattern of, of thinking that is keeping you from being who God wants you to be? Are there strongholds in your life that are keeping you from having a Jesus-shaped life? Would you stand and join us singing again? Just 
obey Christ when when we start turning our backs on the ways of the world and embracing and following God's truth. You know, the courage 
that comes to, to live differently than the rest of the world is, is a courage that the Holy Spirit will, will give to us. It, it's a courage that, that Jesus had to, to go against the, the flow, to go against the, the status quo in the day in, in which he lived. You know, there's a, a game show on the, the game show network that is called Common Knowledge. And, and the, the premise, or what they, they seem to imply, is that all the questions that they ask are just common knowledge. These are, are things that, that anyone should know. Um, stupid. Um, you know, and, and often I feel stupid in, in listening to that common knowledge. But sometimes there are, there's common knowledge that, that, uh, that may be wrong. You know, for example, I think it's common knowledge that, um, that George Washington had wooden teeth. Well, actually, that's not the, the case. His, his teeth were, were made of gold and lead and, and other, other human teeth that were, were put in, in his dentures. You know, there's, a, uh, there's the idea that a, a sunflower follows the, the sun as it moves across the sky, but actually a mature sunflower always faces toward the east. You know, there's the, the, the common knowledge that... that Bats are blind. You know the, the, the saying that someone is as blind as a bat? Well, that's not the case. All, all species of, of uh, bats have eyes, and, and some of them actually are, are, have very sharp vision in, in darkness. You know, there is also a lot of things about God and, and life that people think they know, but they're really not the, the truth. And so we need to, to plant in our minds what is God's truth in order that we might act upon it. You know, when, when it comes to money, everyone knows that, well, we, we need security, so, so keep all you can. But Jesus talks about money a little bit differently. He tells us that we should not store up treasures here on earth, but we should store up treasures in, in heaven. He also tells us that, that where your treasure is, that's also an indication of, of where your heart will be. Everyone knows that a financial disaster could just be around the corner, but, but Jesus says, don't worry about anything. Uh, Jesus said that what we should do is, is seek his kingdom first and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and the rest of life will fall into to order. Uh, God calls us to live by a different sexual ethic than, than the world around us. God tells us to avoid sexual immorality. Uh, we're to handle power differently than the, the ways those in, in our world handle power. Power is not something to be lorded over someone, but, but actually Jesus said when you're in a position of power, you should actually serve those who, who are under you. We're, we're to humble ourselves before others. We're, we're to treat the, the marginalized in, in society, the, the widows, the orphans, the, uh, the, the immigrants, the, uh, the refugees, those who, who cannot care for themselves as followers of Jesus, we, we have a, a call to, to help to, to, to care for them. You know, we are to, to defend and stand up for those who are most vulnerable and have no power to, to defend themselves. We're to love more freely. We're to forgive more quickly. As followers of, of Jesus, our lives should look different than those who do not claim to, to follow Jesus. The way our minds are renewed and, and reshaped is that, that, that God's truth that, that we know, what we know in our mind is then put in, into practice. Our, our thoughts impact what it is that, that we do. It's one of the reasons we've been challenging you to, to read uh, daily devotionals of, of um, the, the Jesus-shaped life during this season of Lent. You know, we've been encouraging you to, to read Scripture every day and some thoughts about those Scriptures in order to, uh, to shape the way you think. As you shape your thinking to reflect Jesus, then it will also impact your, your actions. You know, there's a, a few of those devotionals left out, out on the 
uh, out in uh, Common Grounds. If you don't have one, I would encourage you to, to pick it up and, and you can begin reading. I, I think that uh, you know, today we're at the end of week three or no, we're, we're at the beginning of week four, which would be devotional 22. You know, it's uh, the chapter that, that, that talks about um, the, the courage of, of Jesus. So, so just pick up where we are in the, the series, The Courage of Jesus. Or if you want to, go back and start at the beginning. If you started three weeks ago and, and were real good about reading and you've fallen behind, don't worry about it. Either just pick up where you were and keep reading or, or jump ahead to, to the courage of Jesus. The, the issue is that we need to be shaping our minds with God's truth in order that that truth might then you know, impact the way we live. To live like Jesus, we need to think like Jesus. We need to think differently than, than the rest of the world. We should not just take a, a go-with-the-flow attitude. You know, wherever life takes me, that, that, that's all right. But, but we need to intentionally navigate. We need to intentionally navigate our, our life in, in such a way that we're allowing God's truth, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to shape and, and mold our lives to, to be more like Jesus. If you were to evaluate your, your own life, would you say your values and your lifestyle go against the grain of culture? Or is it an issue that, um, that, that you embrace the, the culture? You know, do you en embrace the values of Jesus? Or do you en embrace the values of this world? We need to, to make our, our thoughts uh, obedient. We need to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Our memory verse this week comes from, from Romans chapter 12, verse, verse 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and, and perfect will. So a couple, couple next steps. You will want, want to encourage you to, um, to, to seek God's truth. Use the, the devotionals and you'll, you'll reflect on God's word, reflect on God's truth in order that your, your mind might be renewed. And, and secondly, I want to invite you to invite to, to, um, to look at the, the influences that shape your life each and every day. You know, what influences speak into your life? Do you have more influences of the world that's speaking in, into your life? On, on your phone, on, on TikTok, on, on Facebook? Now, there can be good things out there that, that take you in, in God's direction, but there also are things that can take you away from God. So what, what do you fill your day with? What do you fill your mind? What do you fill your thoughts with? Are they the things of this world? Or are they the things of, of Jesus? Living for Jesus requires intentional navigation. Let us pray together. Lord, I pray that you would help us to, to navigate our, our lives in, in such a way that, um, that our thoughts are, are shaped and then our thoughts impact our actions. Lord, I pray that, um, that you would help us to be intentional in our walk with you in order that we might become more like Jesus. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. We have several exciting announcements for you this morning. <coughs> Thank you to all who contributed to this fundraiser. The next thing that's really exciting is that camp sign-up starts today, or this evening rather, during regularly scheduled Revolution and 648 Youth. See Pastor Bradley for more information on that. Preschool through fifth grade Easter egg hunt will take place on Saturday, April 16th at 1 o'clock. At this time, there are empty eggs available for you to take home and fill with individually wrapped candy. You may also donate individually wrapped candy for others to use to fill eggs. Also, Vacation Bible School is coming up July 10th through the 14th, and we're ready to start our first preparations. So please join us as we start making decorations. We will have tasks for children, elementary age through adults. The decoration making party is tonight from 6 to 8 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Please bring snacks to share. Also, it's flower time. Easter lilies and assorted potted 
spring flowers will be displayed in the sanctuary on Easter Sunday, April 17th. Anyone who wishes to purchase a plant in memory of or in honor of the loved one may fill out a form in the bulletin, return it to the church office with the money, of course, or you can call the church office at 574-583-5545. And orders are due by Wednesday, April 6th. Hey, we're so glad you joined us. Have a great week. Uh, be blessed. Thank you for joining us for worship at the Monticello United Methodist Church. Next week, we'll be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion, and we invite you to have bread and juice prepared so you may celebrate with us. We hope you will.